Hello boys and girls, Mr. Jumini. Just coming to you with a couple bit more review uh, examples for adding subtracting mixed numbers. So let's take a look at one here. Just kind of throw some up here. Let's go, I'll give you some bigger numbers, some double digit numbers. Let's go 17 and 2 thirds minus 4 and oh, let's go with um, hmm, 3 fourths. Okay. First thing I call my attention to is the denominators, and I notice the denominators are not the same. So I need to somehow make these fractions equivalent, or get this two-thirds equivalent to something and three-fourths equivalent to something so that they have the same denominator. So I always get the larger number, which is four. I begin to list the multiples of four. Four. Well, three is not a factor of four, so I can cross that out. Eight. Three is not a factor of eight, so I can cross that out. Twelve. Hey, 3 is a factor of 12, so there's my least common multiple. So I'm going to come over here. I'll keep my 17. I'll keep my mixed numbers the same, or my whole numbers, 17 and 4. Remind myself that I am subtracting, so I don't mistakenly add. Okay, now I know my common denominator will be 12 now, because that's their least common multiple, 3 and 4. Now I'm asking myself, what did I multiply the 4 by to make it a 12? Well, I multiplied it by 3. More specifically, I multiplied by 3 thirds. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. So there we go. I come over here. What did I multiply 3 by to make it 12? Well, I multiplied it by 4, both numerator and denominator. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8. Remember, now 8 twelfths is equivalent to 2 thirds. 9 twelfths is equivalent to 3 fourths. 8 twelfths is equal to 2 thirds. 9 twelfths is equal to 3 fourths. I've just made these fractions equivalent to a new one, but yet now they have the same denominator. Okay, now let's see if I can subtract. Well, I still have a problem. I can't take 9 from 8. So how am I going to do this? Oh, wait, I need to rename this, this top one here. It's 17. I'm going to rename it to 16, and because I see the denominators are in twelfths, I'm going to call it 16 and 12 twelfths. Now, I have not changed the value of this top just yet. 17 is the same as 16 and 12 twelfths, because 12 twelfths is one whole. 16 plus 12 is... Or 16 plus 1 is 17. So it's still 17 up here. Now, what I need to do, see, I could not subtract the 9 twelfths from the 8 twelfths. But now I have 12 twelfths that I can combine with these 8 twelfths. So I now have 16 as my whole number. 12 plus the 8 gives me now 20 twelfths. 20 twelfths. And I'm going to subtract that 4 and 9 twelfths from my 16 and 20 twelfths. Okay, now I'll subtract. Again, make sure I know that I'm subtracting here. 20 minus 9. Hey, I could take 9 away from 20. That gives me 11. I have 11 twelfths. 16 minus 4 is 12. So now I have 12 and 11 twelfths. Now if I want to check that, I could add this to this 4 and 9 twelfths. Let's see if that would then give me something here. So let's see here. 4 and 9 twelfths. Now I want it to all equal back to here, 17 twelfths. 17 and 2 thirds, sorry. Oh, shoot, what is this? 11 plus 9, that gives me 20. That gives me 20 twelfths. That's 12 plus 4 is 16. Oh, wait a minute. I need to make it 20 and or 17 and 2 thirds. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have an improper fraction here. I can't have a mixed number with an improper fraction. So... I need to say how many times is 12 going to 20? It goes in one whole time. The denominator comes with us. Okay, 1 times 12 is 12. Subtract that from the numerator. That gives me 8 plus the 16 whole I have here. So that gives me 17 and 8 twelfths. But wait, wait, Mr. Giumini. That's still not 2 thirds. Oh, wait, I can simplify I can simplify 8 twelfths. I can divide both by their greatest common factor is 4. So now I have 16, or 17, sorry. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And look at that. That works. Okay. Okay, I'll give you another one real quick before I take off. Let's take another one. Um, let's go with, try something like this. 9 minus, let's go 3. 3 and 7 eighths. Okay. 
Well, first thing I notice, there is no fraction here. This is the whole number. So I can't take the 7 eighths away from anything. So I need to rename this 9. It still has to be worth 9. I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to rename it to 8. Again, I'm not changing it. Like I told today in class, if I have five singles, I have five dollar bill, I have five dollars. If I exchange three of those dollars for quarters and get twelve quarters and I have two dollar bills now, I still have five dollars. So all I'm doing is exchanging here. Uh, maybe when your mom and dad ask for change when you're at a restaurant and they ask for change for a, a, a ten and they get a five and five singles, well, it's still ten bucks. I'm just making change for this. So I see the denominator is eighths. I'm going to make this eighths. And how many eighths are in one hole? Eight eighths. Hey, now I have the denominators the same. I can do this. So I'm going to rewrite this over here. So I have eight and eight eighths minus three and seven eighths. I subtract eight minus seven, one. That's one eighth. Eight minus three is five. Five and one eighth. Hey, I could add this to this to check and see if I do get indeed nine. So let's try. 5 and 1 eighth plus 3 and 7 eighths. 1 plus 7 is 8. That is 8 eighths. 5 plus 3 is 8. I have 8 and 8 eighths. Wait, I need to get 9. Hey, wait a minute. 8 eighths is equal to 1. So really, I have 8 plus 1. That equals 9. Yes, my answer checks. All right, hope this helps out. Take care. Bye.